Hi everyone, I'm here with Fortinet and we're here to talk about a unique architecture to help you secure your workloads running on OCI. Yes, thanks for having us, Josh. So what's the what's the use case that we have for this architecture here? We have like various customers who use hub and spoke models, right? It all depends on how many workloads they want to protect. So the FortiGate cluster, whether it's in uh, HA Active Passive or HA Active Active, they sit in the hub VCN. So for this use case, is the traffic between each uh, VCN going to the hub and then being analyzed and then being sent out as like a kind of a, a trust model? Yeah, so um, we would have like a DRG in the hub and then the traffic, every tra traffic going to the, to the internet or to on-premises or between the spokes is going to through the DRG and to the internal load balancer and uh, to the NVAs, which are the 40 gates. Oh, so they'd use it to basically look at uh, traffic between VCNs and, and as well as you said, on-premises uh, and, and the internet. Yes. So this would meet both like the east-west use cases and a north-south north style? Exactly. So that's the, that's the advantage of this uh, architecture. What is the pattern that you're usually uh, that your customers use to get active active? So if the customer wants to grow vertically, right? So mm -hmm. they would choose active active. Right. But if they want to go horizontally, then active passive would be the and best scenario. What services do you use to support the active active uh, pattern? So in the active active case, the uh, there are a couple of caveats which uh, the customers have to realize is like are they looking at symmetry traffic, right? There's a lot of asymmetric uh, traffic. So you need to have the source net defined on the fire gates. So are you using auto scaling? How would you scale it up? So I have maybe five VCNs, but I want to go to 300. Um, how would I make sure that would work? In this use case with DRG, they, we could do up to 300, I think Oracle's uh, limitation is. So we're using DRG and then a load balancer sandwich to have the NVAs oh. in there. Uh, what type of load balancers do you guys use? Is it the regular load balancer or the network load balancer? Or? It's the network, network load, balancer. load balancer. and internal load balancer. It's more kind of a load balancer sandwich architecture where uh, 40 gate clusters are in between two load balancers. And when customers deploy their applications, um, would they have their public facing web application, for example? Um, where would the entry point come? When your applications are hosted in, or the workloads behind in one of the spoke VCNs, um, it's going to be through the NLB. That's going to be the entry point, the public NLB. And then it would send it to one of the 40 gates uh, because they're either in active active or if it's active passive, it's going to be to the active 40 gates. So in this uh, north south kind of workflow, um, how is the scaling occurring? Do you have a recommended uh, pattern that you follow for that? So with FGSP, we could only have like two 40 gates, which is active, active, mm -hmm. um, but you could scale vertically. That means you can go with two CPU core, like VM or a eight CPU. So it's basically uh, scaling vertically, or you could use something like auto scaling as well. So the other point with the FGSP is like, it, it checks on the heartbeat. So we wanted a dedicated uh, interface on the 40 gate. So if there's like a lot of customers who want to increase the shape of the image, right, instance, so they, would, they can go up. And if you want to go for the active passive, then you will grow horizontally. You will get a bigger shape. But if you want to go with the active active, then you can have the same shape, but more instances. How do you make sure that the rules are consistent every time you create a new instance? The uh, heartbeat uh, interface, which I'm talking about, right? Oh, okay. It checks on the configs. So it makes sure that uh, the configs are consistent across all the instances. So. That's the same thing with active, active as well as the active passive. Active passive case, the act, whatever the active forty gate is, it it will act as a master. So if you make any changes to the active forty gate, then all the changes will pass over to the passive instance too. And once failover happens, the passive instance will become a primary instance, mm -hmm. and it will have all the config changes. So in that auto scaling scenario, um, the new instance would come online, and then it would the heartbeat sync, get the rule set, and then the load balancer would just add it in? No, for the order scaling, it's a d little uh, different concept. Like we, one of the 40 gate will act as a master instance, and that 40 gate will make sure that all the configs are synced across all the other secondary instances. So if you have to make any changes, you have to make changes at the master instance. For the east-west traffic, Tian, what is the kind of 
use case that they're looking at? One of the use case I usually see is like if they have like broad workloads in one of the VCN and then staging or developer workloads in other VCN, it's always like uh, the, dev, uh, the dev or the staging would never want to contact broad workloads, but the broad would be trying to pull something from the dev or the staging. So you would need a firewall policy which would not let, uh, or the east-west inspection there, which would not let the traffic go from dev staging to the prod. So that's one of the main use cases I would say we see. Yep. What is the process like for the you know new workload coming online? Uh, I get my VCN. What would be that workflow? It's quite simple use case, right? One thing is if you are using Terraform, just update your uh, template and make sure that you have your uh, state file, okay. and then update the t state file and do a Terraform apply or the other part is like if they want to use just one uh, uh, spoke, right? What they could do is like take that spoke, have a VC and build it, and then just peer it to the add uh, peering to the DRG. If I added the attachment to my VCN, I wouldn't need to make any other changes on the Fortinets. They would just uh, be able to route traffic. The only thing I would see is the micro segmentation policy, right? We have to have that firewall policy because FortiGate has a micro segmentation uh, kind of use case where you would need to create a firewall policy port two to port two itself. That's to allow east-west inspection. Okay. And also for each policy, you can define what kind of security profile you want. You can turn on IPS, turn on app control, turn on uh, deep inspection. So you have multiple security profiles. So based on the each policy, like you can define whatever security profile. And how do you guys work with the native security uh, features of um, OCI, like the security list and the network security groups? The security group, I would say it's something to get to the, uh, fr um, from the NLB to the 40 gate, right? Like the, the port on the 40 gate. Mm -hmm. So once they have that filtering turned on, if they want to allow um, certain traffic, like just HTTPS on that port, uh, that means we are not allowing SSH traffic to get to the 40 gate. But once the traffic reach 40 gate, it's the firewall policy which is taking care of you know, what traffic to be sent between the workloads or between the spokes. So they can do that or either way, like if they want to open security groups to um, like all the traffic, like quad zero there, um, they can do that, but that's not what, like you're not, you're not filtering anything on IP or port there. So all traffic is getting onto the 40 gate interface and then you can create firewall policies on the 40 gate as well. So it's really a, a very versatile architecture for multiple types of traffic flows to really create um, OCI as like an extension of your data center as well as giving you the, the flexibility to scale to meet customer demand on, on web application. Yeah, we have a wide variety of products. So it covers all layers. Yeah, from so. edge to um, cloud, like, you know, uh, you could deploy Fortinet products and have them on Oracle Cloud. So doing, uh, providing better security together. Hey, did you like what you learned? Make sure to check out this video or this link, and of course, subscribe now.